Welcome to another Goody Reader review video. My name is Marcus. And this is Peter. And today we're going to give you a full hands-on review of the new Jetbook K12. This is the first educational e-reader put out by Ektaco. Just to give you a sense of the specs, it's 5 inch for its screen size, it's TFT LCD, so it's very easy to read. It almost looks like e-ink, and this is sort of what Jetbook is really known for. It lasts for about 26 hours of continual use. There is a microphone and speaker uh, built right into the device, and it is compatible with a lot of different e-book formats. It'll do EPUB, Mobi, PRC, PDB, RTF, text, HTML, PDF, and FB2. So it really does a lot of e-book reading formats and so it's very compatible with almost everything that you'll find and it also is compatible with Adobe Digital Editions. Now you may think to yourself this looks pretty interesting. It, I'll let Peter explain exactly what you're seeing on the screen here. Alright so uh, this is not an all-in-one unit that you see here. This isn't the shape of the device. This is a base that comes with the device. This is a uh, scanning pen and this is the device itself. So uh, just to let you guys look at what comes uh, with everything that just slid out. So you have a pen holder here, you have the base, everything has a slot for stuff, USB cables at the back, so this is pretty much uh, everything that comes with it. Now for the video's sake we will not utilize the base because well, we don't really need to because we're showing the device. So here is the device. Let's give you a little bit of um, uh, let's give you a tour here. So looking at the device here, you see you have stereo speakers. They're not the loudest speakers in the world, but they get the job done. You have a microphone right here. You have a speaker button or a right button or whatever the application says this button is. Same with the left button. It's either a microphone button, a page turn, or whatever the application calls for. You also have a very nice BlackBerry-esque trackball in the middle where you can move up and down full 360 degree motion. You can also press or you can long press on it as well. This is the power button slash back button. So if you're in a, <clears throat> if you're in a menu or an application, all you have to do is press back. On the top, you have a micro SD card slot that's expandable up to 16 gigabytes. Moving over to the side, you have nothing on this side. The right side, nothing on this side. You have a nice uh, bubbled backing. It's uh, rubber, but it's very good grip. Plastic on the top. And you have a micro USB on the bottom with a 1/8 headphone jack. It's not a one quarter or a 3.5 millimeter. It is a much smaller one used for mostly headphones and microphones. Uh, right off the bat you can notice that the design of this aesthetically is really different from probably a lot of other e-reader devices on the market and I think this is one of the huge selling points on it looks really unique and I, I like that. We review so many e-readers and tablets here at Goody Reader that when we see a very unique designed device it always stands a little bit out more uh, than the competition let's um, show you some of the cool features that you get with this device it's retails for about four hundred dollars from uh, Ictaco and you can uh, purchase it the cool thing is the pen so the cool thing about the pen is that it allows you to highlight notes out of textbooks or if you, even if you're reading, you know, writing your own notes, you can actually take notes, put them in the device and actually save it. So let's uh, zoom in on the device here and we'll show you exactly how this pen works. So what you would do is you see your screen here and we will zoom in to see the um, result of what we're doing here. You'll notice the pen here has a button on top. This will activate the scanning screen. You'll see right here that it is a blank screen and I'll show you why in a second. It plugs in via the mini USB cable here that goes into the bottom of the device. And here we just printed out something that says this is the new Jetbook. Scan this text to view it on screen. So what you would do is you want to press the device down on a piece of paper and this light will turn on. The activation sensor is right here. So when you press it down on the piece of paper, make sure the back is on there. So we're, all we're going to do is press it down here and scan across. Let me just position this so you guys can see it. get this one going here so 
So there you go. Scan this text to view it on screen and scan this text to view it on screen. We've just scanned text on a piece of paper. Now it does read several different fonts, so unless it's a very obscure font, um, you won't you probably won't have any problem scanning. So there you go. Yeah, this is a great way to you know, copy uh, notes or, you know, if you're reading, say, a chapter and you want to uh, highlight the most important aspects, you can do it right on the Jetbook. And so uh, I'm a big fan. I think this is probably the coolest feature uh, on it. And you can keep on doing it. And once it's done, you can uh, hit one of the options here on the bottom uh, to save it. Okay, so we're going to give you a tour of the device now and I'll show you some of the other uh, aspects of it. So I'm going to hit the home screen. And you can see the home screen is uh, divided into a number of options here. You have My Library, Oxford Reading Support, Language and Games, Science and Math, Audiobooks and Music, Extras and Help. So let's just start at the top here. You have your My Library. This is where your side loaded books would go. So we loaded in an ebook here by Kristen Hanna called Night Road. You also have the user manual. It will, like I said, it reads a lot of different ebook formats. So if you want to use it as an e reader, we're just going to select the book and hit the page turn buttons. You can you can't really change the font, but you can change the zooming of it by just holding down on the center key here. And then you just see a number of options here. I'm going to click on options. You can scroll down. This is a very finicky <laughs> device. So I'm going to hold down on this. So I'm going to click on options. Okay, maybe I'm doing it wrong. I think it's um, not using the scroll wheel, which uh, is the whole point of the device. So to scroll up and down, you need to use the, the scroll wheel as uh, Peter is demonstrating here. So yeah, different levels of zoom. It's unfortunate that you can't change the fonts or anything like that, but at least you can really kind of customize uh, your experience. So if by default it's too small, you can really make it larger. And it only can go so far in terms of making the text uh, larger. But hey, you know, we'll, we'll take what we can get. It also has a translate uh, buttons and stuff like that. Uh, you could rotate the screen from landscape to portrait mode. It doesn't have an accelerometer or gyroscope or anything like that. But you can uh, do that, as uh, you see here. So you can hold it, the device, or read the text uh, exactly the way that you sort of see fit. So let's just exit it out of that mode, and we'll show you some of the educational uh, aspects of the device. You can see it does go from landscape on the right-hand side and left-hand side, so depending on if you're left or right-handed. So yeah, standard, it does PDFs and everything like that. Uh, just to give you an example of, say, a newspaper before we show you the educational aspect. You can see it's pretty unreadable uh, right now. But it does have like a number of options to uh, reflow and everything like that. Um, it doesn't give you a ton of options. Um, in terms of, say, making a newspaper uh, look good. But we can customize it a little bit. Let's hit reflow and just see what happens. So it, it took away the, um, the borders and, and the way that the newspaper was designed. And all we simply need to do is just change the zoom. And um, suddenly, you know, an unreadable PDF has suddenly gotten a little bit easier to manage. So not too bad. It certainly does let you customize your experience a little bit more. Let's um, okay. Let's exit out of here, and we'll show you sort of the uh, the meat and potatoes. So Oxford Reading Support. You can see that it has a ton of different options here. Let's take a look at the SAT preparation course.
lots of different things here. See dictionary definitions. Before you start uh, each one, there's actually a narrator that will sort of kind of go over exactly, you know, what the the little modules are all about. So it's a thing on English grammar. Didn't really have any audio on that, but it's. Uh, Let's check this out. Okay, some have audio, some don't apparently. But lots of dictionaries here. You have your language and games, so you spell it right. Vocabulary builder. Picture dictionary. So you can. Picture dictionary displays pictures of related words and provides translations and human voice pronunciation in 39 languages. Simply select the desired source and target languages, topic, and subtopic. You will see words with... So, kind of cool, sort of displays exactly what you want to do, but, you know, you can, uh, you know, look at a tall, you can type words in. So, yeah, I mean, you can see a lot of things here, spell it right. So yeah, I mean, this this device offers a lot in terms of being able to, when you're in books, to be able to highlight a word and the built-in narrator will actually tell you the definition of the word. Uh, a lot of modules here in order to kind of get you learning new skills. Uh, the SAT preparation uh, course I could see being very popular. You also have some science and math things. Uh, you can check out everything from the periodic table. You go here. So you can just click on something and get all the element info. I, I kind of dig this. This is super cool to have everything right on the device. And it works like that with all the elements. So you can see there's a lot here. And I think part of the price on this unit is just because of all the content that they loaded sort of on it. I'm not going to show you every single one, but you could actually see that there is a lot here. You know, everything from like physics to biology. So, reference table. Okay, uh, you can listen to audiobooks and music, so you can put your own MP3s and everything on here. Let's just give you a taste of what this is all about. Uh, Peter mentioned that the speakers are pretty lackluster, but, you know, that's what the headphone jacks are for. I think intentionally they didn't design this for super loud speakers or, because if you have a classroom and everyone has one of these and everyone's like listening to music, it could quickly become a cacophony of sound. Extras and help. You can see here that you have some settings. You have the voice recorder, although you do need a micro SD card in the Jetbook K12 in order to utilize this. Uh, there's also some learning settings. Just show you some of the things here. You can program your own settings in. So English to Spanish, Spanish to English. Let's check out the main settings here. So deauthorize the device would be with Adobe Digital Editions. You can change your default fonts. You can change the volume. So here's that microphone, headphone, speaker volume, as well as the master one. You can see that it doesn't really have fonts that you can choose, like Arial or anything like that, Times New Roman, but you can change the font size. And then you finally have device info. So you can see that there really isn't a lot of free space that comes with the device. It looks like what? 
yeah, 250 that the device ships on, but after everything's on there, you don't have a whole lot, so you can see all of it right here. So Jetbook K12, um, like $399. It's the one of the first pure educational readers that have hit the market. So I think part of the, the accelerated cost just because they're not manufacturing a ton of these. So, you know, if you're not manufacturing millions, you're more or less paying a lot for them. So overall, Pete, what's your impressions of the Jetbook K12? Well, for this device, for an e-reader under $100, this would be absolutely amazing. It's very suited for the price, but unfortunately, this is not the case. This is a $399 bundle. It is absolutely, I would, I would probably not buy this device. Yes, it is geared towards educational use. Um, there wouldn't be a time I would ever purchase this device, almost ever. I mean, you can almost buy two BlackBerry Playbooks for this device price. Um, it, it's black and white. There's no Wi-Fi. I find that a lot of the, a lot of the information and a lot of the applications on this device that are preloaded, you can easily find on another device. You or easily download on another device the pen isn't enough of a drawing point because it for the four hundred dollar price point because it never really um, about ten percent of the time it reads incorrectly uh, I, I don't like the the thick USB cables that you have to plug in every which way uh, it has 250 MB storage I don't see where the cost is I don't see why it's four hundred dollars but the device itself is good it's really just the price that's bothering me quite a bit and it do, it is a major turn off for purchasing yeah I mean it's stable and robust you know scrolling to menus and launching programs even opening books you're not really waiting too long so I kind of like that I would have liked to see an e-ink based device but I can see why why they've gone with the TFT LCD. It's really an Ectaco's MO for all their devices to uh, have this type of screen. And yeah, so what you see is what you get. It's, you know, if you're for basically from grade one to grade 12, I think it would, parents buying this for their kids, I think it would be like a cool study tool. You know, I'd say a tablet has more bang for your buck in terms of like what you can do with it. But the one thing about this is that there's not a lot of distractions. There's not a web browser. There's not a lot of things to take you away from the essence of the device, which is a learning tool. And so I think a lot of parents might be won over by that or uh, school, uh, school and, and institutions may like this because, you know, your kids aren't going to be playing Angry Birds. They're not going to be surfing the Internet. They're not going to be checking their Facebook or their email. They're going to just be straight using this as an educational device. So this has been a review of the new Jetbook K12 by Ictaco for goodyreader.com. My name is Marcus. And this is Peter. Everybody take care.